In this video, we are going to discuss about fork and wait system calls. First, let us see about fork system call. It is mainly useful in order to create a child process. Here the child process is an exact replica or duplicate or copy of the parent process. That means child process should contain same data of the parent process. So child process and parent process both are same only. Here the process from which where we call the fourth system call is called as parent process whereas the new process that is the duplicate process is called as a child process. Here the child process is exact similar to the parent process but they differ by process ID. Every process will have an identification number. So a process is identified by PID, process ID. Here the parent process and child process both are same except process ID. So PID is different for parent as well as child process. Here what will happen is the parent process as well as child process will work, will execute concurrently. Each has its own memory as well as its own resources. Fourth system call is available in a header file called UDSTD header file. And fork system call mainly returns three values. Fork system call returns minus one. If there is an error while creating the child process. So that means if no child process is created, then fork system call returns minus one. Whereas fork system call returns zero for child process. For the parent process, fork system call returns a positive number. That positive number is nothing but the process ID of the child process. So fork system call mainly returns three values. Zero for child process, minus one or negative number. A negative number when there is a failure while creating the child process. And it returns a positive number for the parent process. That positive number is nothing but the process ID of the child process. Now let us discuss about a fourth system call with the help of some examples. So let us see the first example. So here we have a stdivo.h. It is a C program. But we are running in the Unix environment. I am using Ubuntu environment. Here we are using unistd.h. Why? Because in this program we are using a function called getPID function. It will return the process ID of the process. Every process will have a unique process ID. So here uh, uh, in main function what we are doing? Printf we are displaying some messages. Process ID of the currently running process is it is displaying an integer. For integer percentage is the format specifier get PID. In this program, we are not using any fork system call. So that means here we have only one process. Our main function is nothing but a process. Every program will have one process. So our main function is nothing but process. So here we have only one process. So let us execute this program. So here, what is the name of the program? ex1 is the name of the program. So already the program is uh, uh, already written. So vi ex1.c. So already we have the program. Now let us do the compilation. Let us do the uh, compilation now. Yeah. Uh, instead of that uh, uh, colon pq. Instead of uh, vi editor, I am going to use Pico editor. So Pico ex1.c. 
so this is our program now let us do the uh, compilation gcc space ex1 dot c so compilation is over next for execution dot slash a dot out if we execute the program then the process id will be displayed process id of the currently running process is 35 it may be any number some 40 or 500 any number will be displayed so this is our first program now let us see the second example so in this example we are using fork system call as well as get pid function both these uh, functions fork system call as well as get pid function these two are available in urestd.h here we are using fork system call i already said that fork system call returns two values if it is successfully executed it will returns zero for child process and a positive number for parent process a positive number for parent process so now here we have main function this main function is nothing but a parent process so for this parent process fork system call will creates the child process so fork system call returns zero for the child process and a positive number for the parent process so how many times this printf function will gets executed this printf function will gets executed for two times one for parent process another one for child process now let us execute the program so already we have ex2 so this is our program now let us do the compilation compilation so gcc ex2.c so there are no errors now let us do the execution so if we observe here the parent process process id is 42 next to process that is that is child process id is 43 so this program got executed two times why because whenever fork system call is executed then it will returns two values so one value that is zero for the child process yeah if you see here on success fork system call returns twice so zero for child process and a positive number for the parent process now let us see the third example so in this example what we are doing is we are calling the fork system call thrice so printf so we are calling the fork system call three times so printf hello by process id is percentage d comma get pid so how many times this message will get printed if we use the fork system call then what will happen so let us assume that this main function process is p1 and we know that fork system call will create a child process for the parent process so let p2 is the child process for p1 process so after first to fork system call executed we will have these two processes next if second fork system call is executed then what will happen is it will create two more processes here we have two processes p1 and p2 for p1 process a child process will be created let it be p3 for p2 process also a child process will be created let it be p4 so we will have four processes after second fork system call next if third fork system call is executed then what will happen is here we have four processes so for each process one child will be created so for the first process fifth process will be created next to for the second process sixth process will be created next to for the third process seventh process will be created for the pro fourth process eighth process will be created so here how many processes we have one two three four five six seven eight we have eight processes so our message will be displayed eight times why because in the previous program already we have seen one fourth system call invocation when one fourth system call is invoked 
then what will happen? Two types the message will display. One for child, one for parent. Here we are calling for three types. So how many types this message will get displayed? Eight types. Why? Because eight processes got created. So pico ex3.c. Yeah, this is the program. Now let us do the uh, compilation. Compilation. So gcc ex3.c. Now let us do the execution. If we observe here, eight processes are created. One process ID is 50, next to process 54, this is the second process, third process, fourth process, fifth process, sixth process, seventh process and eighth process. Here the process ID should be unique. So each process has its own identification number. Now let us see the last example. So this is very very important example. So here what we are doing is instead of stdio udstd we are using sys slash types dot hdr file. Why because here we are using pid underscore t. It is pid underscore t stands for process id data type. It is a predefined data type which is available in sys slash tabs, types dot hdr file. It is just like a integer. So here Q is the variable name which is of type PID underscore T. Next statement. Uh, we are calling the fourth system call and storing the result in Q. So now how many times this program will get executed? We know that every fourth system call will return two values. 0 for a positive process. I am sorry. 0 for child process and a positive number for parent process. So let us assume that first it returned a positive number. So that means first parent process will get executed. So if we observe here, if Q less than 0, then print of error. We have an error. So that means a child process is not created successfully. Else if Q double equal to 0. So 0 means it is a child process. So we are displaying that child process PID. Here we are displaying child process PID. So get PID function is enough. Next, now let us display child process parent ID. For that we have a library function called get PPID. Get parent process identification number. Next, else if Q greater than 0. Greater than 0 means it is a positive number. It is a parent process. So now what we are doing? Here we are displaying the parent process identification number. So that means Q is greater than 0. That means it is a parent process. So just get PID is enough. Why? Because now we are displaying that process identification number. Q greater than 0 means here we are running the parent process. Next. Now we need to display child process ID also. I already said that uh, fork system call returns a positive number for the parent process. That positive number is nothing but process ID of the child process. Process ID of the child process. So now we are, uh, yeah, let us assume that now we are executing the parent process. So parent process means, parent process means now Fork system call is returning a value that Q contains that Q contains child process PID number. That Q contains child process PID number. So that's why here for displaying the child ID that Q is enough. Why? Because parent process contains that whenever fork system call is executed, if it is a parent process, then it will return. A positive number. That positive number is nothing but child process process identification number. Now let's see the output here. Let us assume that initially it returned a positive number. So that means it is a parent process. So first condition is false. Second condition is false. Third condition is true. So what will happen now? Its uh, PID will be displayed as well as 
its children PID will be displayed. Next, one more time the program will get executed. That is for the child process. For child process ID is 0. So first condition is false. Second condition is true. So the child process identification number will be printed as well as its parent process identification number will also get displayed. Next here we have carbon section. After the LCF ladder we have carbon section. section. So this carbon section will be executed for both the parent process and child process. If you see the execution. So initially we got parent process output. Next to some carbon output. Next to child process output. Next to some carbon output. So carbon output will get will always get displayed irrespective of it is a parent process or child process. Here we may get the output like this or we may get the output in a zigzag manner. So that means first to this statement may get displayed. Next to second statement may be this statement. Next to third statement may be this statement. We may get the output in any order. Now let us see the program. Pico. So, example 4.c. So, this is our program. This is our program. Now, let us uh, uh, compile the program. GCC EX4.c. Next, uh, let us run the program. So, here we got the output like this. So, first parent process information got displayed. Next, children process information got displayed. Next, that common output for the parent process as well as child process got displayed. Here the problem is uh, we may get output in any order. Suppose if we want to execute child process first, then we can use wait system call. So let us see the next program. That is wait system call. Wait system call suspends the execution of the calling process, that is parent process, until one of its children completes its execution. Uh, here we are using the wait system call. Wait system call is available in a header file called sys slash wait dot h. Wait dot h. Same program, just like the previous program only. But in parent process, we are using an additional statement called wait of none. Wait of none. Whenever wait system call used in a parent process, then the parent process will wait until its children completes its execution. So if we run this program, then what will happen is, first to child process information will be displayed. First to child process will get executed. So these two lines will be printed. Next to parent process will be executed. So that means these two lines will be displayed. Okay. So, so here we have carbon section. So after the child process, this carbon section will be displayed. After the parent process also, this carbon section will display. So this is the advantage. So here the uh, parent process is giving priority to the child process. After child process execution only, parent process will get executed. Now let us see the uh, wait program. So Pico EX, same program, same program. But we need to add two statements. We need to include this slash wait dot h as well as in the wait function, we need to pass parameter also, wait of done. So we have to execute wait system call in parent process. So now what will happen? The children process will be executed first. The parent process will wait until its children process completes its execution. Now let us run the program. Yeah, first if you see here, first to child process got displayed. Next, this carbon section is for child process. Next to parent process output. This carbon section is for parent process. Carbon section. Yeah, this is about uh, four kind of weight system calls.